functions of the foundation. We started talking about it last week that the number number one it is to bear the load of the building. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> what does that mean? To bear the load of the building. That's what the foundation, that's one of the functions of the foundation. What does that mean to you? To bear the load. To weather the storm. Weather the storm. So that if you are standing on this foundation, it bears your weight. It undergirds you. Yes? So Peter says, Apostle, Jesus says to him, Jesus says to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Right? So it is a sure foundation and it bears the load of the building. So I asked you last week to just do a little bit of a study on cornerstone. Uh -huh. So who did some, some search, some study? <laughs> okay, so what did you find out about this cornerstone? Talking about the foundation. What did you find out about the cornerstone? That it is a load bearer. It is a load bearer. Yes? What else? About the corners, though. Usually uh, sits northeast uh -huh. of the building. Okay. It sits in the corner of a building. Yeah? Uh -huh. For what reason? What about the Well, that's where all the other stones are supported by that cornerstone. So uh, that's kind of like the job or the uh, standards by which the other stones are built. Architecture. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So the cornerstone is normally, especially in ancient times, the cornerstone is the stone that is laid first, laid in the corner, and as you were saying, it is to ensure that the building is square and stable. Right. It is from this cornerstone that all other stones will be in reference to this stone. So it determines the position of the entire structure. Yes. Why is that important? Because Jesus says he is the chief cornerstone. So how do we relate this to our spiritual building? If the cornerstone is the first stone that's laid, and it's in to ensure that the building is square and stable, and all other stones that will be laid in that foundation are based upon that chief cornerstone. He's the chief cornerstone. Go ahead. In, in whom all, all the buildings fitly framed together yes. grow up into a holy temple yes. in the Lord. Yes. In, in whom, whom we also are built together, together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Know ye not that you are the temple of God? So the scripture says we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And it's through him that everything is built, the building is fitly framed together. Without him, there is no fitly framed together. Okay? And then because we are fitly framed together, we're able to grow up unto a holy temple in the Lord. Because we have the foundation, a sure foundation. Right. That one that's been tried and tested and true. And true. The one that will, it's not going to crack on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the sure foundation. It's the sure foundation. So we want to move forward in talking about the three most important functions. We've dealt with the fact that it is to bear the load of the building. Mm -hmm. Tonight we want to talk about it is to anchor against natural forces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the foundation. It is to anchor the building against natural forces such as earthquakes, storms. In Matthew 7, 25, it says, And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. But what? And it fell down. Read again. And the rain descended, and the floods came, yes. and the winds blew, yes. and beat upon that house. Uh -huh. And it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock. It fell not. So we're going to have those seasons of rain. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. We're going to have the seasons of the flood. But the foundation, the function of the foundation is to anchor the building against all of that. Are you anchored? <laughs> because the storms are going to come. So what happens when the storm comes? <laughs> what will you do? Will you stand?
Are you still standing? Mm. Yeah? Or will you fall? And we talk about the fact that, listen, um, we're saved and sanctified. We are the temple of the Lord. And sometimes we may fall. But there's something called grace on the foundation. Yeah? Thank God for the grace that's on the foundation. So, in Hebrews 6, 18 through 19, let's go. You can read it on the screen because this is an, um, the Living Translation. Talking about how it anchors us. Let's read together. So, so God, God has given both, both his promise and his, his soul. Yes. These, These two things, things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Wait a minute. Let's just stop right there. Just, mm -hmm. just, just that right there should make us happy. Yes. That it is impossible for God to lie. To lie. <laughs> I'm excited about that. So whatever he told you, Whatever he has promised you, he can't go back on it because it's impossible. It's impossible. Not that he can't do it just because he won't do it. No, no. It's impossible for him to lie. His character, his essence won't even allow him to do that. Amen? So let's go. Therefore, we who have blessed him for refuge can have great power. Yes. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our soul. This hope that we have based upon the foundation is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Anchor comes from Agrica, Greek, the Greek word. It is a stay or a safeguard that provides what? Stability. Woo! Life is filled with swift transitions. <laughs> But when you have an anchor, you can still remain stable because you're on that foundation. Acura. Acura. Anchor. It's the set. It's the safeguard. So that in the midst of all the storms, you still have stability. People will wonder why. Well, 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 I know what's going on in your life. I know you got this going on, that going on. How are you handling all of that? I'm stable. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still standing. Yeah. Why? Because I'm anchored. Yeah. I have a hope that anchors me. Yes? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I want to talk about this one for a while. Yeah. The last function of the foundation is to isolate from brown moisture. That's the function of the foundation. Excessive moisture makes the home or the building shift. That's right. <laughs> so, watering down the gospel okay. Okay. <laughs> will make a spiritual house or building shift. shift. So anybody that wants the watered down version of the gospel, you are exposing yourself to a shifting that's not of God. Because it's going to move you from the foundation. Let's be clear. Nothing happens to the, the foundation is sure. But you are shifted from the foundation. This watered down gospel. Okay. Uh, okay. That moves you from the truth of the gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember, we're going to talk about the standard. We're going to get to the standard. We're going to that structure next. Right? Because there has to be the foundation that's laid. You can't lay any other foundation. This foundation isolates you from the watered down version. You got to know. You have to know. You have to know when you hear. Is this the true gospel? Or is this the water pound gospel that, that has too much, too much moisture in it? Too, too, too much moisture in it. Too, too much moisture, which means I'm going I'm to shift. Which means I'm not in proper alignment any longer with what God has required. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not meeting the standard. Remember, when you when you're building, there are codes. Yeah. Building codes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> there are building codes, and you know, uh, for anyone that's on the spiritual house, this is the build. This, this, this is the building code. 
yeah. and if you're not following the building codes, yeah. then I'm sorry that the building, the building is going to fall at some point. You can dress it up, you can shine it up, you can put the paint on it, you can do all you want to do. But if it's crooked, it's <laughs> because it's not lined up with the foundation, it's going to fall over. But thank God that God goes before us and he makes the crooked places straight. Amen. <laughs> so now, watering down the gospel will make a spiritual house or building shift. Mm -hmm. sure. Let's read. Let's read. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4. New Living Translation. Let's read it. Preach, Preach the, the word, word of God. God. Let's Preach. stop right there. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's it say? Preach, Preach the, word the word of God. Okay, wait, wait. Not your philosophy. Okay. Right? It says what? Preach, Preach the what? word. That's not 
true. It's just a story. Mm -hmm. Listen to fables yeah. and myths yeah. instead of the truth. The truth. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's moisture. Mm -hmm. yes. But the foundation isolates you from the moisture. Mm -hmm. But if you don't stay on the foundation, if you don't keep Jesus as the chief cornerstone, then here we go. Shifting, shifting, shifting over here. No. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. They, they will follow their own desires. Right? There is a way that seemeth right. But how many of you want the way that is right and not the way that seemeth right? <laughs> The way that seemeth right leads to what? Destruction. But the way that is right is eternal life. Yes, yes. Eternal, not, not just life. Eternal life. Eternal life. So, so my question is, are you on the foundation or are you shifting with the moisture? Mm. Are you shifting? <laughs> are you are you one of the shifty saints? <laughs> are you are you one of the shifty saints or 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 are you on the solid rock? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm just asking a question and, and uh go on. I don't know what happened to my to my to my PowerPoint. She when I she had a phone call. Hey. See? Hey. The any matter, we ain't shifting no. Yeah. We're gonna stay on the sure foundation. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. All right, let me see here. Uh oh. <laughs> see, technology. <laughs> <laughs> So the three primary functions of the foundation, can you name them? Come on. The three foundations. To bear the load. Anchor the building. Anchor the building. Isolate from the moisture. Remember when um, Jesus came walking on the water? Remember the story? Mm -hmm. Jesus came walking on the water. The disciples are in the boat. They look and see Jesus, and they think that it's Jesus, but they're not for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's Peter. He says, if it be you, what? What's the story? If it be you, <laughs> bid me come. Yes. They're on the water. Now Jesus is walking on the water. Yeah. Yeah. Peter says, if it be you, bid me come. Uh -huh. What's Jesus said? Yes, here he comes. 
uh, from every which way. Strong wind from the north, south, east, and west. Converging all at one time. But listen, but listen. When Jesus said come, Peter was able to walk on the water. He was in a sea, right? Full of water. But because of the foundation of the world, I think you can see, get it in your mind, get this picture, that he really wasn't walking on the water, right? But, but, but because of the word of God, he was walking on a foundation, yeah? So the water was up under. The water was up under, because it was the sea, they were, they were on the sea. But because God said, come, the word of God is so strong and powerful, it is the foundation that you can walk on. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But now Jesus was still walking. Now how was it that Peter started sinking, but yet Jesus was still walking? They, same word, same foundation. How was it that Jesus was still walking and says, come on, your faith, what? Let me, let, me, let me just stretch my hand out and get you. What happened with Peter? He doubted. He doubted. The Bible says, the Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God. What did, what did you say to Peter? He said, come. But he that cometh to God, when God says, come on. Yes. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Yes. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Okay, but so now you're, you're walking, Peter. What happened that caused you to start sinking? <laughs> Ask yourself the question. What happened that moved you from the foundation? Distractions. <laughs> you wait a minute. Jesus is right there. Uh, Jesus is, he's our Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. So he's right here. He, he's, he's right here. And he's right here. And he's right here. And, and he's right here. So he, he's right here. So, so why are we doubting when he's right here? Listen, I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> because, because I've taken a risk of faith. What? And I'm like walking on water. I'm walking on water. But the foundation says, one of the functions of the foundation is to secure and isolate me from the moisture. Mm -hmm. If I stay on the word. Peter could have walked all over the sea yes. with Jesus had he not doubted. Now, tell me this. Does the doubt that we have change the foundation? No. 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 Okay, then explain why he started to sink. Because the word was the foundation, right? So then how can he sink if he's on the foundation? She was on the foundation? No, I got out of faith. He got out of faith. He doubted. He doubted. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I won't. Yes. Please understand that the foundation does not change. Oh, the foundation does not change. You do. Yeah, we, we move yeah. 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 Your, your perspective on your situation right. will, will determine if you can walk on that foundation That's or not. Right. Mm -hmm. Not the foundation. The foundation is sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your perspective, uh -huh. your demand on the foundation. Mm -hmm. How many of you expect to walk on water? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're the one. No, no. If Jesus was here and he says, come, how many of us expect that against all odds, I can do this thing? No, no, no. Because see, what happens is we say it because we have a cerebral response. Yeah, because in our head, yes, we can do it. But when it comes to execution, action, performance, where, where, where are we in our faith? Where, 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 where are, oh, 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 Jesus, I'm sinking. Paris thou not that we perish. <laughs> Paris thou not. <laughs> but, but, but why? Why are you sinking? And that's what can 
community and church is a <laughs> Because we need to be able to come into an environment and strengthen one another. Right. So that if I can see that you might be sinking a little bit, it's my job to come. To come right up next to you and say, well, ha, 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 come on, I'm going to lift you. Yeah, yeah. Use my faith until you can get your faith together. Because we can get this done. But Jesus said, come. He's saying, come to us. All of us. He has said, come to all of us. Are you ready to take the risk of faith and respond to the call? Even though you know there are going to be some boisterous winds and you know there are going to be some attacks against you and you know that there's going to be some adversity and you know that some people are going to talk about you and you know that some, there are going to be some attacks against your family. No, no. What are you willing to risk to say yes to God and stand on this short foundation? No, I'm really asking you. Like, what are you willing to risk? <laughs> I'm really asking. Are you willing to risk it all? No? Okay. Count up the cost. Any man who builds a building, if they build a house, you got to consider the cost. What is it going to cost you before you say yes? But the good thing about it is, uh, whatever God asks you and you say yes, he's already equipped you. But sometimes you don't see what he's equipped you with until you start walking. Amen. Get out the boat. Yeah. Walk on the water. Yeah. Now, I know that we normally tell the story because Jesus uh, was out on the water, and we tell the story because Peter started sinking. But can you just focus on the fact that he was the only one that got out that boat? Right. Yeah. And he did walk? Yeah. We can't deny it. Listen, I know he started sinking, but the fact is he did walk on the water. Uh, <laughs> it might have been two steps. <laughs> it might have been two steps. Just two steps. He realized his feet was wet. Come on. <laughs> but he got out the boat and he started walking. Because the foundation assured him that he, for a moment, it assured him. Or he had the cognizance to understand that the foundation secured him from the water. Please, we have to hold on to what God is sharing with us. Don't allow the enemy to come in and cause you to doubt what God has said. You cannot allow the enemy because then that's when you start sinking. And then the foundation, the function that it is supposed to serve in your life, it doesn't serve that. Not because it cannot, because you've shifted from the foundation. Because the water causes you to shift. Okay. You shifted your thinking. You shifted your faith. You shifted your belief. You shifted your yes to a, um, I'm not so sure. Maybe, maybe, but not today. <laughs> no, stick with it. Right? So the foundation, the function, to bear the load, to anchor you. You have an anchor that no matter what's coming against you, stand. If you have to bend and bow, grace. But still stand on the foundation. Stand on the foundation. And then it isolates you from the moisture. You have to reject watered down preaching. Watered down teaching. Because what does it profit you? Honestly. At the end of the day, we want to have eternal life. I think so, right? How does watered down teaching and preaching, philosophical preaching, stories and fables, how does that position you for eternal life with God? How does that position you? Not the way that seemeth right. Not the way that says, I don't want anybody to say anything about what I'm doing because I'm grown. Yes, I am grown. But God has given us fathers and tutors and teachers so that our building, the temple of God, can be built up. We're in the business of building people, not just building buildings. We want to build people so that you understand who you are and you can walk on the water. 
Because all of us are going to be given that opportunity to walk on water. The question is, will you step out the boat? You have a call on your life. You have a call. You have a call. You have a call, Elliot. You have a call. Lady Bianca, you have a call on your life. Will you step out the boat? Yes, because I'm just going to push you on out of the way. <laughs> you getting out the boat. <laughs> you getting out. We are getting out the boat. <laughs> The second anatomical feature we're going to talk about is the structure or the frame. Does this bless anybody tonight? Yes. Now, the structure of the house. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My time will be better. I don't want to keep this over. The structure is the frame. The frame. Um, we're gonna. I'm gonna have you study something. It's called a plumb line. Yes. Uh, anybody know what a plumb line is, sir? It's a measuring tool. Yeah. You know what the plumb line was used for? It's a measuring tool. It, it determines if something is straight. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when we start dealing with the structure, then Jesus, God uh, used a plumb line to measure and to determine if it was straight. He used the plumb line to normally for judgment. He sets the plumb line and he says, this is it right here. This is what's straight. If anybody doesn't measure up against this plumb line right here, that means you're not in alignment with my will. I'm going to judge you based upon the plumb line. Oh, boy. Wow. We're not going to get to a judgment message. Don't worry. Y'all look scared. Like, oh, she No. It's just the fact that um, when we build the structure, we already have the cornerstone and the foundation, which means that we can now build a structure that's straight. But sometimes we have to, have, but all the time, we have to have a standard, the plumb line. We have to have a standard in order to build. Remember those um, codes, the building codes? That's the standard by which you build a house. You can't just go and put a wall here, a wall there, and then a wall over there. You have to follow the standard and the building codes. Yeah? So we're going to get into what are the standards and the building codes for the structure of your building. I need you to stay in the plumb line. What was it used for? How do we relate that to our lives today? How do we relate the plumb line? Mm -hmm. Just based upon what I said about it being the measuring tool. <laughs> the standard is set. Where do you measure up? Are you crooked? Or are you straight? Oh, Lord Jesus. Are you crooked? And then, and then, so you remember the, the, the codes are in here. Okay? So are we lining up with the word? Or are we still in the way that seems right? Remember? The moisture. I want to do what I want to do. And I want to go to a church where you're not going to tell me what to do. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And who's going to don't judge me. Oh, <laughs> you, you, don't judge me. But I, I, I'm not, listen, I'm not judging. The Lord just put out the plumb line. That's, that's the standard, so I, I'm not judging you. But I do have an obligation and a responsibility All right now. to give you a gospel-centered version, because that's the only version that matters. Right? I, I, have a, I have a responsibility as a preacher, pastor, teacher. And guess what? It's not just my responsibility. We all have been called to the ministry of reconciliation. Who are you going to reconcile by giving them a watered-down version of the gospel? How is that going to reconcile them to their true identity, their authentic identity in God, their true purpose? How will that reconcile them and align them? We have a great responsibility. But at the same time,
same time of it being a great responsibility, it's such an honor and a privilege that God would entrust all of us to help somebody grow in him. That's an honor. That every day you go to work, you have an opportunity to rub shoulders with somebody and smile. Uh -uh. Please smile when you go to work. <laughs> please, please. All saints of God should, should, should smile. Amen. Please. You, you should smile. Uh, all, all the saints should, should, <laughs> should be nice. Even on a bad day. Y'all quiet. Amen. <laughs> can, you, can, you, can, you, can you just be nice? Yeah. Uh, my pastor, he says, um, um, it's important to be, it's, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. To be nice. Yeah. Today is a world kindness day. Today? Today. Oh, well, turn, look, turn to your neighbor. <laughs> turn to your neighbor and say something kind. Today. Say something. You look so nice. Come on, give somebody a compliment. sunshine when it's raining he can't do it so you have to work every day when the storm coming you already you won't be able to do anything yeah right so yeah work while the day night coming can't pour no man can't pour mm -hmm. but when god gives you a season of peace yeah. build mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. when he gives you that season build take advantage of the season Right? Because there is a time where you cannot. 
Amen. Amen. Right? Not, but, but spiritually, <laughs> thank God, spiritually, Bill, you have a solid foundation that will not let you down. The foundation won't shift from under you. It's sure. You shift from the foundation. Don't be shifty, say. <laughs> Don't be shifty, say. Stay sure. Yeah. The Bible says you have to be unmovable. Always abounding. Be ye steadfast. I mean, you stand there. And when you can do nothing else, stand. Stand. And stand still if you have to. Sometimes you cannot move. But standing still is not just a physical position. It is a spiritual disposition. Standing still means I'm waiting on the Lord for my next move. I'm waiting to hear. I have an expectancy. Why do we not come to church with expectancy any longer? I'm from old school, y'all. I'm from old school. I am. I am. And I, and I, and I want the Lord to stretch me because, because I know that I was listening to, I went to a lunch and learn today uh, with Bishop uh, Joseph Walker. It was amazing. Yes. But he said, he said, he said, marry the mission, but date the method. Uh, date the method. Because the method is always going to change based upon the culture, right? But stay married to the mission. Yes. Stay married to the mission. Right? But you can date the method because yes. that has to change. People don't like change. Right? So I understand I'm coming from I'm coming from apostolic Pentecostal. I understand that God wants to stretch me. Right? To just come out of certain traditions. Not my foundation. All right now. Don't mess with my foundation. Don't mess with my diet. Right? Mm -hmm. You cannot. We can we can change some aesthetics. We can do some of that stuff. But you can't change the diet, the foundation upon which this house is to be built. But I believe in miracle signs and wonders. Anybody yeah. here believe in miracle signs and wonders? Do you? Absolutely. Yes. You do? You 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 do you listen, do you believe in miracle signs and wonders? Anybody yes. in here believe? Amen. Well then where are they in the church? Where? Where? I just want to know, when you come to church, are you coming with, the, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm like all off my left. But listen, listen. When you come to church, are you coming with any expectancy at all? Or are you just coming to church? Listen, when I come to church, I want, oh, what's God going to do today? What's God going to do in this service? What's God going to say? What miracle am I going to see? Do, do y'all? Yeah. Listen, if we don't put the witness this this foundation, Peter, you're out on the water. But if you don't put a demand on the foundation, if you have no expectancy of the foundation holding you up, then of course you're gonna sink. What expectation do you have of the foundation that you're on? What expectation do you have of the God that you serve? I don't know. To me, honestly, if we're serving a God and we're only satisfied with him just making sure that our bills are paid um, and that we can come to church and we can hear um, a good sermon and there's no encounter and there's no experience and there's no demonstration and there's no manifestation, what the, why are we limiting the God we serve? We, wait a minute. Are you saying that, that, that that's all? Uh, that your God can do? Right. Is that all <laughs> that your God can do? You serve the God of the universe. Why are we limiting him in our services? I want, I want demonstration manifestation. I want miracle signs and wonders because that's the kind of God we serve. Why sell ourselves short? If God is a God of miracles and I need a miracle, I'm coming to church because I'm expecting my miracle. Yes. 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 I'm coming with an expectation. Do you have an expectation? Do you have? I'm a preaching message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a preaching message. What did you expect? Mm. What, did you expect? Hey. What, what, what did you expect? Or what did you expect? <laughs> or, or what did you expect? 
Or yeah. what did you expect? <laughs> you got it? Yeah. Yeah. What did you expect? Yeah. Come on, come on. Did you expect him not to do it? Mm. Did you think he couldn't do it? Right. Did you think he wouldn't do it? What What did you expect? Mm. Wow. Or what did you expect? <laughs> because if you have a little bit of faith, what did you expect? Yeah. If you spend no time in prayer, what did you expect? Mm -hmm. If you spend no time in any spiritual disciplines, what did you expect? Or what did you expect? Because yeah. I've been with God. I've been, I've been power with God in prayer. I've read my word. I've worshipped. What did you expect? Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Preach from that. Thank you. 